Welcome. Welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Point. Got P.O. Coach in the house. Tasha T. Sizzle in the house. Mr. Mike, Michael Hasso. Oh, I see you ready for tonight in the house. Go blue. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally here. We finally got some real life games to talk about. We got a lot of football, a lot of college football to talk about today, and we will get right to that. But before we do, Mike, you probably know better than anybody that when me and Tasha T. Sizzle get on opposite sides of a topic, then, you know, some sparks will fly from time to time. Mm -hmm. Am I correct in that assessment, Mike? Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, I need to, to bring you in on something because Tasha posted something earlier this week that was absolutely egregious and I totally disagree and, and what? I don't think we're going to find any levity between the two of us. So we're going to make this the goon squad question of the day and we're going to start with you because you were the original goon. Mike, does ketchup and mayonnaise belong on a hamburger? Not on my hamburger. <laughs> Thank you. Not on my hamburger. I, I'm more of a mustard mayo kind of guy. So I'm not no mayo. I don't want no fucking may no, no mayo nowhere. No, I don't want mayo on nothing. So Michael, you're you're mustard and mayo. That's quite a cosmic mix there. No, yeah. so no ketchup for you. Just on the fries. No. Yeah, it's too sweet. No, yeah, no, I don't even like it on my fries. It's, I'm I'm all, I'm all ranch. You know that. Oh, okay. All right. Well. As the peeps come in, I will I will get their their gather on that because uh ain't nothing like a waffle with cheese with a little extra mayo to let that, that burger slide around on the bottom of that bun with your toppings, your pickles, your lettuce. No tomato. We don't need no tomato, maybe an onion or two. And, I mean, uh, yes, I like tomatoes, but not on a burger. I just think it makes it slimy. That does make it a little soggy with the palate experience, but I digress. Um that burger looked delicious, by the way. You should have Put a little mayonnaise on it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is officially day three of a five days in a row of college football. We have mm -hmm. a tremendous slate of games today. Thursday night kicked off with a bang. We had 4.2 million people tune in to watch Coach Prime and the Fighting Primes take on North Dakota State University. Year two debut for Coach Prime. They literally get away by the skin of their teeth on literally the last play of the game. They won 31-26 over North Dakota State. Mike, I know you watched that entire game. What say you? What, what was your thoughts on the year two debut for Coach Prime in Colorado? Um, I mean, it, it, it's he. They're, they are what I think that they are and where they should be. Um, North Dakota State isn't like a like an easy win for anybody. I think they went something like six and zero against like whatever they said, um, like top teams that they play against. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think they played well. I think they got a lot of cobwebs out. I think they needed to show, you know, especially, especially since they were getting trolled the whole off season with these little, uh, them cutting the reels of the passes and all, all that. Um, right. So I, I think this was a good showing for them. I think it was a good win. A good win. And the Tasha, did you get to catch any of the game on Thursday night? Of course you know I didn't. Your thoughts? I mean, it's the same thing that they were saying, you know, seasons past. You know, you got Travis Hunter that looks good. You had uh, Jimmy Horn that, that, that actually got off. He had like 100-plus yards and a touchdown. Uh, Shador looked good. They have no running game. Um, that, that freshman left tackle, number 77, I don't know his name. Is it Sherman or something like that? Those are the only bright spots that defense is still very, very suspect. Uh, not taking anything away from uh, North Dakota State. Um, they're a good team. They usually play hard um, in their division, but they should have beaten that team by more. And, you know, we were going, you, well, you guys are going back and forth about the point spread. Um, I just think they could have done a little more but it is first game you know and they still have a lot of things to work out but it was just uh, amazing how on twitter everyone seemed to be rooting for colorado to lose like that's that's the thing yeah now, it's probably it's, because it's probably because 75 percent of the betters were against colorado so that's, that's probably why everybody had right. money against them 
Now, I get that from a money standpoint, but to Tasha's point, I was listening to Nashville local radio and the, the guy that's on the afternoon drive, Jared Stillman, he basically came out and said yesterday that he was rooting for Dion to get humble, that he was rooting for North Dakota State to win the game with no money involved or anything like that. And, and we'll get a little bit more into prime as we go along. Good morning, Denise. Denise, good morning, Jarrell. Now, Jarrell says, hey, I'm from East Texas. It's mustard, bacon, and onions on his burger. He said we can yeah. eat the ketchup and the I'm mayo. Okay with that. what I'm uh, talking about. Out of there. Okay, All right. Yeah. So Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter basically threw their name in the Hosman hat. First first game out the gate. They were they were they were out of the blocks fast. Shadur, 445 yards passing, four TDs. Travis Hunter, seven catches, 132 yards, three spectacular touchdowns. Oh, and by the way, he played all but two defensive snaps in the game as well. Mike, mm -hmm. we haven't seen uh teammates. Both go to New York for the Hosman ceremony since 2005 when Matt Leonard and Reggie Bush did that. Could this be the second time that we see that with Shadour and with Travis Hunter? No. I mean, that was also a UC, uh, USC team that national title winners and then went again to lose to Texas. But I don't think you're going to see that from Colorado. I do think that you're going to have to win to be on there. The only other thing that could happen, I could see Travis Hunter uh, showing out on both sides because if they have anything above 500, I think he'll be at the state or on the stage. Um, I don't know about accepting the award, but he'll be there. Now, uh, to Jarrell's point, he says Colorado only running the ball 15 times is going to hurt Shador. One thing that I did notice in that game was that Shador has a lot of Russell Wilson in him and the fact that he's holding on to that ball entirely too long. Now, in a couple of those occasions, it did lead to some big plays down the field, but he was getting hit at the whistle. These weren't late hits. They weren't dirty hits. He was getting hit as he released mm -hmm. the ball, and you can't sustain um, a full season getting hit like that. Good morning, Mark, Treese, Hastings. Um, only running the ball 15 times is going to get him hurt. To Tasha's point that they did struggle to run the ball. Now, that, the, now the little white boy, hey, he, he, was, he was showing some flash. I'd like to see him get more touches as the season progresses. They kind of sprinkled him in, and, and he did well trying to, to get out some tough yards um, at the end. Now, Mike, to your point, you said that uh, you don't see the, either one of them getting to, to New York because of their record. Um, Jaden Daniels last year won the Hosman with three losses for LSU. Tasha, how many losses can Colorado withstand and still have someone in the Hosman? First of all, y'all know I was not a fan of that. I did not think Jaden Daniels should have won the Hosman Trophy. Um, first of all, uh, a three, t a three loss team should never, ever have a candidate in the running for a Heisman trophy. So let's just start there. Um, and also it's, it's sad that it's only quarterbacks that seem to be winning this thing. Travis Hunter is the best thing on that team. And if it came down to it, I would think that they would give it to another quarterback, not even Shadour. They would give it to another quarterback. If Travis Hunter has continues to play the way he played Thursday night, it's no reason why he should not win a Heisman Trophy. And if, if you're going to give somebody a, a Heisman who had three losses, let them lose three times and he deserves it too. Because right now he's more explosive than Jaden Daniels off of this one game and what I have seen from Travis Hunter in the past. And this is no slight to Jaden Daniels, no, no slight to him at all. Just, just if we're going by, like we always say, the history of how things work out, there's no way in hell a quarterback with one loss or a player with one loss would even be considered to, to win a Heisman. It's funny that you say that, and Mike, I'm about to come to you because Desmond Howard was asked this yesterday on Get Up, and he said that before uh, – well, yeah, I guess it was in the wake of the, of the week one win – that regardless of record, Travis Hunter is the most explosive player and the best player in college football – to think about what he's done, we haven't really seen that since 1997 when Mr. Charles Woodson played on both sides. But he wasn't even featured that heavily on offense as Travis Hunter is now. Now, Wayne checks in. He says the Bucs will never be a running team. They have too much talent and game breakers on the outside. That Horn kid, he looked like Joe Horn from the from the Saints out there. He was he, he was explosive. And, and, and him and Hunter make a, a fantastic uh, one-two punch on the outside along with Shadur. Wayne also says – he can't run like Jaden, uh, so that's what separates them. Yeah, he's more of a traditional pocket passer, but 
Mm-mm. I, I personally think that the record should not be counted against either Shador or Travis Hunter if they continue on this trajectory with 400 yards passing four touchdowns, and especially Travis Hunter. I think it's more of a case to be made for him playing both sides. He didn't give up any explosive plays that I saw, Mike. If he did, if you saw one, correct me. But I don't remember him giving up any any deep balls or getting burned in the end zone or anything on defense. He played all but two snaps, and then he was a, a focal point in the offense. Interesting. So, Mike, Sasha says nobody with three losses should should be even in the consideration. Mike, where's your limit? How many losses? Yeah, I would I would agree. I I, I don't know about three because I think because then that we're still on the bubble of the 12 team, right? So like a three loss team could get in. So let's say hypothetically you keep someone out of the Heisman race and they get in and they end up winning the whole national title. And then you're like, that, that should have been our Heisman. So I probably would do like four loss. Um, it's kind of like the break, um, especially with this new playoff system. But I, I don't agree with you on the, it doesn't matter on their record. Like you can't tell me like you have a losing record and you're going to get a Heisman. Like, nah. Right. Nah. Okay, so the so what's your criteria then? Just the best player on the best team? Um, not necessarily. I mean, best player. I I, I guess so. Um, and it has to be like I would say top ten team. Um, there has to be like a standout. Um, and an example is like, uh, I guess we can go like Blake Corum. You know, before he got hurt the year, or I guess twenty twenty. Two, he was actually a candidate, um, and then he got ended up getting hurt. Um, I don't know. Like, I think the top ten is probably a good top ten or top twelve. That if you're getting into the playoffs, then you should be considered, and you're a top player. Okay, because the Hosman is an individual award, not right. a team award. So when we're looking at somebody who's playing on both sides of the ball, and he's playing it at, a, at an extremely high level, I think that if he's an All American then I think that definitely puts them in because All-American status is not based on wins and losses. It's based on production. The Jarrell says they don't have to be a successful running team, but they do need to run to give the quarterback a break from all the hits. I totally yeah, It's, totally it's agree the Big 12, that. though. Since when have they ran the ball or had a defense? Like Exactly. Exactly. And Shador is not a dual-threat quarterback. He's, he said it himself he's slow. He, he does have some sort of scrambling ability, but if you don't have a running game, your quarterback needs to be able to tuck it and run. And that's not how they're trying to, you know, because they don't want him to get that label like they did Lamar Jackson. So they right. want your door to stay in that pocket more and only run if it's like the last option. But, dude, y'all kind of yeah. at the last option. It's like – think... Go ahead, Mike. No, no, go ahead and finish your thing. Um, Like the way their defense is set up is – it's apropos for the Big 12. They don't play defense, right. but their offense is not potent enough for them. I mean, you see, they don't, they put 31 points up, but look how much they allow. Their offense, if they're not going to play defense, their offense is going to have to, you know, I told on uh, on Jarrell's show, like some of these teams, they're going to have to start playing like those Spur area uh, era Gators and just scoring 60 points at this rate because their defense is not going to stop anything. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, like, another Heisman thing that I know the committee looks at it is the, these big games. So, like, if you're showing up for these big games, then you're going to be in. And that's the thing where Colorado, like, they do have some big games. So I don't foresee them having a losing record and still winning these big games. So it's right. it's either or. You know, if they show out and win these big games, then, yeah, they'll be considered. Um, but I agree. I think Travis Hunter is probably the way to go. Oh, and Jimmy Jimmy Horn, by the way, had 198 yards. And we're talking 198 yards where he left a little bit of meat on the bone, too. If Shadur could have hit him stride on a couple of those plays. 198 and one touchdown. Explosive. I, I love what they're doing. Um, and we're going to get to Wayne's comments here in just a second. I think if you're Colorado, it, it, you want your defense to just, to just bow up in the red zone. Then, but don't break. I think the key to that victory – was the fact that they gave up a couple of field goals instead of touchdowns. That was literally the difference in the game. You won by five points, and you they kicked two field goals. Although, refs, let's get it together. Yeah. Travis Hunter was held on that touchdown run. There was they, a they, lot they, of they, ref calls, yeah. There was some bad calls. Um, now, uh, Wayne says, remember last season all the hype early? 
Just everyone take a chill pill. They won't keep this pace up. Once you get to conference play, teams will scheme up to stop them. One thing yeah. also to consider with Colorado is the fact that they, they let the FBS with turnover. I think they have 42 new players on the team. So um, by the time they get to conference play, it could be the reverse. They could start clicking because that's a lot of, of chemistry to build in one game. And North Dakota mm-hmm. State is not is not what you would – it's not an ideal first team to play to right. start your season. I would not have, have done that. Uh, Wayne I mean, also but, says, but as Mike ahead. said, uh, when I asked Mike last week, we were saying something. Mike, what was the question you asked me about the Big 12? And I kept saying – Who's, who's even in, in the there? Big 12? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't even know who's in the Big 12. Like, to Wayne's point, conference play and people figuring them out. Who's figuring them out? I don't I don't yeah. know who's who's on the team. And, and this is something that Mike would normally pull up. Yeah, uh, I have it right here. I mean, they do they do play ranked teams towards the end of their season. So that's like, you know, what they were saying on the chat is, like, they start out hot, but then they play the last season and they play Arizona, who's ranked at Arizona – um, home with Utah, which is going to be a tough game. Kansas is going to be a favorite at Kansas, and then they finish out with Oklahoma State. So, and and no matter what what everyone says about Colorado, and I read this too, they was like college football always needs a villain, and that villain right now seems to be Prime. But that's how Prime made his name. You know, it was must see TV. It was look at me, look at me. But Col- but they had an average of four point eight million viewers and peaked at five point six million. Mm-hmm. On a Thursday opener, and that was they said that was 49% over last season. Two unranked teams putting up those type of numbers, and that can only be yeah. attributed to Coach Palm. And back to the Hosman uh debate, what you also need is visibility on yeah. a national stage to get Hosman to garner Hosman votes. Now, I agree with Wayne, he said this is a different day and time, record shouldn't matter, talent is spread out all over the place. It's going to be interesting because you can give me. Uh, let's let's say who's the, the the quarterback for Ole Miss that's in the top five or or or, or maybe uh, Georgia or uh, Carson Beck. Carson Beck isn't as good as Travis Hunter. Come on now, let's stop playing. No, no, so, but you, we but all you know. put the criteria for being the best player on the best right. team, and right. that would be a Hosman travesty. Good morning, AP culture. Now Wayne, stop it with that. That was also an FBS team. That, that, they're like three times. I mean, it, I mean. It, I mean, it was. And then also Trey Lance's little brother is a wide receiver there. But that is true, Wayne. And and you – I mean, for a team that has all the talent that Colorado is supposed to have, you do expect them to blow – what did you and Mike say in, the, in your comments? I said 14. You both expected it to be, you know, two to three touchdowns victory but they barely squeak by now i mean i didn't watch because you know espn won't let two people watch it at the same time i went back and i watched a lot of the clips and everything and some of the highlights on twitter uh it's no way that they should have been in that game but i blame that on the defense good morning a p culture he's uh paul they play tsu next week let's go eddie let's go eddie george oh i love football season no wayne is gonna keep you up to date on those HBCU games. Like, God bless you, Wayne. Welcome back, football. Now, he says the talent level will be different. Did y'all see those DBs the Bisons had out there uh, guarding a hunter? Not as good as my – he was cooking for number seven. Number seven was out there. He was like, uh, R. Kelly, I'm fighting for my life out here. <laughs> fighting for my life. Hunter. Woo. Woo. That was good. But – Y'all not sold. Sasha, it, it sounds like uh, to, to put a nice little bow on their season debut, you're not sold that they may be any better than the four wins they had last year, are you? I mean, n- n- y'all, both of y'all came at me all last season. No, that was I, me. You can leave Mike out of this. That was me. Because I, I wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid. And Drink went, it. One finna Jim Jones me down there in Guyana and, and have me, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, whatever. I mm-hmm. want them to be good. Let, let's just say that I'm not I'm not rooting against Prime. I'm not, I'm, I would never root against Prime. I want them to be better, but the product that they're putting out is not showing me that it is better. The you four play, wins from last year. Utah, Arizona was good last year. We don't know if, if what Arizona did last year is going to translate to this season because uh, they came out of nowhere right. and you know got ranked. We don't know if Arizona is going to be any good and like. like Mike only listed literally two teams in the Big 12. 
But, I mean, are they even going to be able to beat the rest of the teams that are there to have a decent conference record? No. If, if, the, if the defense can bend and not break, if they give up field goals, you're not beating Colorado with field goals. I don't care what team you are in the Big 12. You're not beating Colorado with field goals. Like, Warren Sapp in that defense and, and Ed Reed and, and uh, you know, all the rest of those Hall of Fame players that they have on the staff. I saw T.O. mentoring. Travis Hunter on the sideline on Thursday night as well. They have they have a lot of great mentors, but the one thing that that I want to take away from this one is the fact that they're gonna score on you. Horn, Travis, they got that that the uh, the the kid that's the uh, freshman that, that's kind of like they they call him their Debo Samuel. They're not gonna run the ball, but in college football, it's not as 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 important to run as it is in the NFL. And yes, the Bisons are very. Just I mean, we're, um, we're acting, we're six acting six. like we're acting like them scoring thirty-one points when they're supposed to have a really good offense is really good. I mean, I'm okay. Like, 30. is is that good? Well, how many points were they supposed to score against? No, uh, fifty. I well, mean, if, 30. You're, if you're saying if you're saying he's uh, Travis Hunter is burning, dude, like more than thirty-one. I mean, thirty-one would have sufficed if your defense didn't allow. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you have points. an ex, if you have an explosive offense and you only score seven points each quarter, that is not an explosive offense. No. Again, it would have looked more impressive had the defense held them to maybe 12 points. Now, one thing that I think is being missed in this whole 31 points was the time of possession because of the defense. The offense was scoring in record time. They weren't they weren't dinking and dunking the ball down the field. I think in the first half, uh, North Dakota State had the ball for 20 minutes of the 30 minutes because the defense couldn't get off the field. So if, if the defense can even get a couple of three and outs, I think you will see a more explosive offense. Well, the the second right. half, no, the second the half, fourth. the second half, North North Dakota State only scored six points. So what do you mean? And they got and and they got walked down because they were they were down. The yeah. Bison played ball control football, which limited the bus touches. Yeah. That was by design as well, and I think that's going to be the blueprint to keep the ball out of Shadur's uh, hands. But you only get so many uh, possessions in a game if your defense can't get off the field on third down. And not only were they giving up third downs just straight up, they was having dumb penalties on third yeah. down what, as well. What, what quarterbacks did um, Spurrier have when he was at Florida? Mike, I'm trying to look that up, but you know. it's. I think we had, uh, was it Grossman? Wayne would probably know this as well. Um, I, I can't remember uh, all of their names. Look, okay, so whatever quarterback they had, didn't he did have a Heisman? Win. Who won the Heisman? Somebody from Florida won the Heisman. I want to think it was say it was a quarterback when. I, what I was going to say is, what quarterback was are we saying is better than Shador? What in the, in the country right now? Mm. No, at that I'm I'm going oh, to back then. And mm. then, like, who were the wide receivers at Florida at during those spur areas? Who was the offensive line? That to me, that's a explosive offense. Right. So if you're saying that they're explosive, if they can't even stack up to what Steve Spurrier had, is the offense really explosive? I think they are. And Wayne brings up an, an excellent point as well. Don't forget that pick that hit the, the interception in the end zone to hit off the guy's calf. Like, that's, <laughs> like, like, when, how many times in, are you going to see that happen in a, in a, yeah, uh, a college that was football well. season? You know, so like, um, and it was their first game with a whole new offensive line, whole new coaching staff, yeah. things of that nature. Um, I just think that that the expectations for Colorado are astronomical and maybe fairly so, maybe unfairly so. But I think 31 points in a season opener against a team that had great success against Division One opponents in the past, I think that's a pretty decent showing. We know that the the, the defense was going to be a problem all year long. How many all wins do you have on that? Um, now, uh, Mr. Matthews, great point. One of the things that really concerned me was the fact that they kept getting stuffed on third and one. That was a problem. It, you don't have to be yeah. a running team to be able to move the ball on third and short. So we shall see. Uh, They've always had O line issues, though. Warfel. That was like their main thing. They had Danny Werfel who won who won the high. Oh yeah, Werfel. Yeah. So are we saying Danny Werfel was is better than Shador? I'm not. I don't remember him playing, but but absolutely not. Danny Wolfer was was not even a, a sniffing NFL caliber talent. And I think Shadur Sanders 
is going to have a, a nice NFL career if he stays healthy and goes to the right situation. Yeah, they must get better up front on both sides of the ball. But I think after watching today's gamut of games, we're going to be saying that about several teams. Um, yeah. Especially, especially during this transfer portal era where, you know, you know, yesterday you was ball hit and today your hair's down your back. Like, who, you know who are you? You don't know these teams. You know what? You know what? Oh, my gosh. I'm just Pretty saying, like, we don't really know. Pretty soon, uh, uh, Ray is gonna be growing up and be like, Wait, didn't that player play when we were watching as kids? I'm like, Yep, right, still playing. Ray, you're okay. right, you so, screenshots. The wide receiver that they had on that team, Redale Anthony, and that Redale Anthony was good. We all remember yes. him, but mm-hmm. are we saying Redale Anthony is better than Travis Hunter? Absolutely not. Mm-mm. No, not even Horn. You did have Zach, you had Zach Pillar at left tackle, but the guy um, I think is is his name Sherman number seventy seven. He's a freshman, so we're not going to compare him to Zach Pillar because Zach Pillar was a very good left tackle. Yes, um, and he was a Titan, so God bless him. So let me see, full back. Now, well, they did have Fred Taylor at tailback. Fred 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 needs some some uh, NFL Hall of Fame consideration as well. He he was a great running back. Now I agree, Shadu was the best quarterback last year. In this year, I think pound for pound, um, when you're on a t- when you, he's in Justin Her- Justin Herbert mode, where it, it's like the administration has failed him as far as in the trenches. And that, that's well, I'm not going to say he was the life. best quarterback last year. I'm not going to agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with that. I'm, um, I'm you not. put him, you put him on Washington, and Michigan don't win the national championship. Oh, that's laughable. Stop it. Thank you, mm. thank you, Michael. Michigan don't win that national championship. You put him on Alabama. Win Bruh, Alabama. You 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 you're talking about how many sacks he gets in the Big Twelve, and you want him to go against the number one defense? Stop it. Stop. Um, with Alabama's offensive line, with Washington's offensive line, the one the Alabama trophy is the best again, offensive line in the country. He, but he didn't have that. Now I'm not now. Had he been at Alabama, he would have had a more that's successful. My, that's season. my point. He would have. But, he would have had time to throw the ball. But he didn't play for them. He played for Colorado, up there in Boulder, the Buffs. That's who he played for. So you cannot say he was the, the best quarterback last year because he was not. The record and his play indicated that he was not. I this yeah. I think well, Penix was last year. Yeah. Well, Penix was the best quarterback last year. That's because y'all him, know I him, said he him and all 13 of them points they scored against Michigan in the national <laughs> Exactly. Title. That's a good point. He the tea in China. He should have won the Heisman. 13, 13 points against oh. Michigan in the national championship. Man. Speaking no, of national know. championship. We got, we got, uh-uh. Shadur, Shadur, Shadur would have sent him home packing. So, uh, he said, uh, facts, the dude drops dimes. Yes. Thank y'all. Let's not let's not do this this morning. He's better than Penix now. I agree. Good morning, Reverend Woodard. Please say a prayer over Shadur Sanders, Reverend Woodard, that he may stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> Let's go, Shadur. Now, I mean, y'all know. I'm for him because they, right now they're they're saying that they want the Cowboys to draft him because they're saying they're saying he's better than Dak. I'll take him over Dak. Here we had eight years. Mm. I mean, years. first of all, Jerry would literally have to blow the team up and trade all draft picks to get in the top five because that's where they're um, saying Shador is going to be going, top five. Um, or just tank, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't well, think gonna well tank. it's going to be hard to tank in that division. Uh, they're going to win that division, not even trying. Uh, uh, he was better than all the QBs that was in the Final Four last year. I totally agree, Wayne. I totally agree. Um we're not getting anywhere with this one. Is it, yeah. See, y'all are, see when, when people don't agree with these two. I mean, DeMond, like we, DeMond, the subject, we're, we're, the DeMond, we're, we're not saying that Colorado would not have been where they were without him. But to put him over all quarterbacks last year, no, he was not. Jordan Travis was having a better season until they broke his, his leg in 18 pieces. <laughs> Bo, Bo Nix was having a good season. And y'all know I ain't sold on Bo Nix. Caleb Williams, even though his season wasn't really good, he still played better than Shador. To me, but he, but again, these we are mentioning teams who had better systems around them, more protection. But you cannot say he's the better quarterback because he played at his school just like those other teams played at their those other players played at their school. 
So Mark, you can't Mark, Mark. Was a better quarterback if you look at everything, top to bottom, all the quarterbacks. What did he do? Well, let's see what the NFL scouts think in March to see if he gets drafted before Carson Beck because we all know that Georgia's going to have a better record than Colorado. I mean, let's we see know if he goes that, ahead of Carson Beck. Come on now. We all know why Beck is being put out front. And I'm not saying because he's white. It's because he's a Georgia and he's in the SEC. Georgia will have more wins. They'll be in the playoffs. They'll probably be one of the favorites to win the national title. And Shadur Sanders will be drafted light years ahead of him in the draft. So because Georgia has a, a Georgia has a team. Georgia has a team. That's what we're saying. Colorado doesn't right. have that's, a team. They have no running game. Point. You put Shadur on a team like that, and they don't lose a game in three years. All right. Now let's move on to Dion. He said his mechanics is better than all the co- I, Wayne and, and Demond, y'all are cooking. Y'all are cooking. You're putting seasoning on it and all of that. I agree with y'all wholeheartedly. Let's move on to Dion because last year around this time, y'all, y'all remember last year around this time with Dion? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you go there, Demond, I just want to let you know that they continue to slander your your coach, your head coach in um, Pittsburgh. Uh, they said he wears SpongeBob shoes because he'll come out <laughs> with them black forces and stomp somebody's head in. I just want to let you know that, Demond, while you're on here, that they continue to talk about Coach Keep a job. Okay, but I digress. Back to Dion. Hey, Coach SpongeBob shoes got a quarterback quandary. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. The SpongeBob goes hard. <laughs> he do got the. See, like, it's all love, DeMond. We, it, it, you know, but you know he wears those SpongeBob shoes, you know. All right. Now, remember last year with Dion, he was doing all of this. He was on First Take. He was on Good Morning America. He was on 106 in Park. He was on everything. He had The Rock doing pregame. Uh, are you smelling what The Rock is cooking? He had Little Wayne out there rapping before the game. He had all of this fanfare. Remember after the TCU win in week one? When he looked in people in the eye and he said, I told y'all we was coming. Well, we're here now. And it was so much bravado and they doing all of the watches. Fast forward to Thursday. Oh, Dion looked like he just fin- finished the presidential term. The man looked like he didn't aged in dog years. The hey, man I like looked, that. I like the gray beard. There was no joy in his eyes. Did you you notice that he didn't do any of the, the in-game interviews? He sent Shador to do it at halftime, and then Travis Hunter did it post game. He's been arguing and bickering and beefing with the media all summer long. Yeah. I even thought that it was kind of crazy that in his post-game press conference, after going 1-0 and and, and having a win to start the season, the first thing he did was rail on Colorado for not having the air on in the press room, saying, I'm sorry, media, that we don't have the air on. They, they be trying to turn the air off like we ain't got no money around here. Like, Dion, what, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. now y'all know, uh, <laughs> y'all know, good morning, uh, family, and yes, tomorrow his feet do be hurting. I know that's why he's so mad all the time, but he does keep a job. He does keep a job. Shout out Chris Clifford. Oh, really, man. yes, 106. Y'all know him. Dion was everywhere last year. Now, um, he looks tattered, tethered, beat down. He yeah. banned CBS Sports from asking him questions because he didn't like the coverage they was giving him in the offseason. Then he just banned somebody, a journalist from the Denver Post because he didn't like what dude was saying about him. And the school put out a press release. Oh, he can't ask no football questions. Tosh, is the, is the pressure getting the prime? I don't think it's necessarily the pressure. I just think he knows he's the HNIC, and he's like, I'm not going to have that mess around, around me and my players. Like, it almost goes back to what I say about the coddling of the new generation, where you, the new generation can't take criticism. And I think Dion feels like if that criticism goes towards him, it's going to go towards his players. And these new generation of kids are not built for that criticism. So I get it. I think it's stupid because any if you don't want to answer the question, you just say next question. But for you, for, you know, for them to and for the university to go along with it, it's kind of asinine because why, why are you allowed to say I'm not going to take questions from this person as opposed to just saying next question? In the famous words of Skip Bayless, it's as a nine, as a 10, as a 11, and as a 12. Mike, what are your thoughts on the coach prom and his handling of the media this offseason? Yeah, I think he's like torn between two. Um, one, he's he's trying to be like a player's coach, um, to where he's like, okay, well, if this is what you the route that you want to go, and you're not listening to me, obviously, um, you're saying dumb stuff, 
you know, against your O-line and all this other stuff, like you're not listening. And, and I've heard, I mean, all, obviously everyone's heard like stories behind the scenes, like locker room, like all that hazing and stuff like that, that they're doing. And, and I don't think Dion wants to be necessarily a part of it, but he's also saying like, if this is what you want to build and you're the captain of this team, then you're going to have to sit with it. On the downside, what he's learning is that everyone perceives that team as him. And he's like, I mean, and that's where he gets defensive. He's like, but no, you're not going to call me out. out. That, that's for, and rightfully so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because he's the head coach. Um, right. So you're going to get all the smoke. I mean, yeah. So I think he's just torn right now. Um, I think this is, this is what we thought was going to happen with a new head coach at a high level. Um, if you want, I mean, kind of like what Tasha said, you want the smoke, you're going to get the smoke. So hopefully you're ready. And he, it, it seems like he's not ready. The, the, the whole reason why I, I led into this, this topic with how he was behaving last year with the media and loving the attention, bring it on more, 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 yeah. more. And anytime you put a camera in front of me, I'm going to be there. Remember you have uh, Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp catching a red eye after the first take to be on the sideline for the game. And he loved Rick Ross with the big chain on and And he's out there and, and, and he's boogieing. He's talking smack about the Colorado State coach. Talking about leave my mama name out of it. And, you know, prom was in his bag last year until Oregon came and snatched his soul. God, <laughs> good Lord. Boy, I blame you, Oregon. <laughs> Oregon, you didn't have to do that, man, like that. Y'all snatched that man's soul. And then the clip went viral after the game, which made it look like, oh, yeah. Now, Chris says, hey, man, let that man cook. Let him cook. Tasha, what do you say to let him cook? Let, let, well, we're not letting him cook. I mean, I understand. Again, I just, I'm not a coddler. I just don't, I don't agree. That's why I, I said, I, I thank God that I had a child when I did have a child. I, Sasha was spanked. She wasn't beat. Sasha got spankings. By the time Sasha was four, five, six, the spanking stopped because she was, the spankings worked. She was trained. Okay, well, if I do this, this is what's going to happen to me. Sasha was never coddled. And if Sasha did something, I told her, if you know, you did that, you got to deal with those repercussions of what you're doing. I don't believe in coddling people, children, anything. Having a kid today, everybody wants to coddle and bend and break and bend and break to these children. He has to let them take that because when they go to the next level, if uh, when Shador gets drafted, when Travis gets drafted, when Jimmy Horn gets drafted, whoever else on that team, those comments are gonna fly. Oh, well, you don't have Dion here to protect you now. You don't have Coach Prime here to protect you now. That stuff's not gonna float in the real world. So Dion is creating this community where he's just holding everything in and trying to protect the kids. And I get that, but stop coddling these damn children. Uh, uh, Marvin says that's how we were raised, and exactly. it worked. Wayne says, "Hey, man, Tasha, you getting? Hey, pass that collection plate around. Send your cash app in the comment, Tasha. Send your, <laughs> your cash app in the comments." Now I want to go to what Wayne just said, and I'm going to come to you with the mic. You can't give it out and not expect folk to give it back. I remember after the TCU win last year when he said, "Remember, I told you we was coming. We here now. What you got to say now? Remember, I had on the yeah. cowboy hat and the sunglasses, <laughs> and I was all bought in." <laughs> I think I jinxed him with that damn outfit. I was all bought in. But, Mike, yeah. you can't give it out and not expect to get it back. And, and furthermore, the one of the most futile uh, endeavors that you could ever embark on in your entire life is trying to wage war against the media. Who has beaten the media in a, in a war of words? I, if there's been somebody, somebody in the comments from Tasha Mike, help me out. Why are you focused on them when y'all lost eight games last year? Why do you care that now that guy, they said they call him a false prophet and, and on the uh, Mark Jones on the broadcast on the ESPN said that that was something that Dion told him that he questioned his faith. And, and that's why he was so what? So you can call me a heathen. You can call me a devil worshiping bastard. But guess what? We're going to get on <laughs> field and get ready to rock and roll. Like, what does that got to do with I, my team? Mike? I think I think Dion's taking a clip from your 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 guy, Jerry Jones. Um, and, and the fact that he's doing his job, if we, if we step back and take a look, right, Colorado, we were not talking about Colorado three years ago, uh, four years ago, 
Uh, he, t- he had four wins last season. I expect them to probably have six wins. It's like that's we still going six, upwards. Mike. We pushed it with six. I have him at six still. Um, and the thing is, like, we are still talking about him. Yes. We are we yes. have been spending 45 minutes about talking about this Colorado team that's only gonna have yes. six wins this season. And, and, and the thing is, and the, and the engagement they move the needle, they move right. the needle, and that's right. all that, that's all that's, that's all he wants to do. Tasha led in with the fact that, that it peaked at over five million people watching an F uh, FCS team and a yeah. FBS team that went four and eight the year right. before. Five million people yep. tuned in. That is great for college football. And to your point, that is a Jerry Jones like move. The one thing I want to say though, Dion, is if you start out, if you finish the month of September undefeated, don't be don't be coming looking for them cameras. Don't come looking for the cameras because then you're gonna piss me off. Like if the, if it's you against yeah. the media right now, like I don't want to talk to you, CBS. I don't want to talk to you, Denver Post. Y'all can't talk about me. Y'all can't. Y'all being negative. Y'all doing all of this. All all of that. If you start off four and zero, five and zero, six and zero, don't come looking for first take. Don't come trying to do your media tour. I just need you to just just be quiet and and, and um, I will never say shut up and coach or shut up and dribble. But are we getting close? Good morning, Stephanie. <laughs> um, old fish eyed fool, let him talk. <laughs> let him talk. Wait a minute, y'all. Hold on, I gotta close the window. It started raining. Hold on. What up, CeeLo? You know, I you hear you back. You don't hear CeeLo. He's not. He's over here asleep. Now, Mike, while she goes and closes the window. It is time for Michigan Mike's official mm. college football playoff predictions, y'all. All twelve. Yeah, we teams. better hurry too before Tasha starts yelling at me. So. Oh yeah, so I think she's gonna get with you on this one. So let's let's bring it up. What we okay? Let's go, Mike. The floor is yours, sir. All right, all right. Uh, twelve spot. I had, it was really hard actually. Um, it was either between JMU and Memphis, just going off of who can go undefeated. I think both teams have potential to go undefeated. I just feel like JMU's uh, schedule is a little bit easier, so I put them at the 12th spot. But shout out to Memphis. I think y'all can get it done. Um, and then I have at, at the 11 spot, LSU. Um, I think they can get done this year. I think they win against USC coming up. Um, they, their schedule is fairly simple. Um, besides being in the SEC, so definitely two losses there somewhere. Uh, Michigan, I think they could potentially um, be the only three-loss team. And I know we're like, wait, how does that happen? But they could potentially be the uh, the only three-loss team um, because, of course, Ohio is in there. Texas, Oregon are all in there. Um, nine spot, I have Notre Dame. Just because, I don't know, for some reason people love Notre Dame. And I, I hate Notre Dame. Y'all already know that. Um, I think they need to hurry up and just join a conference already. Um, but I know they're going to make it just because they, they they bring the money. And uh, Penn State, originally, I, I'm not sold on Penn State. And I'll, I'll be real. I'm not sold on them at all. However, they're scheduled. They don't, they, don't play, they don't play Michigan this year. So they literally play Ohio State, and that's it. So it's like, mm, okay, we're going to put you in there. Um, Ole Miss, I have at seven. Um, I think they have a really good team this year, and I think they could probably knock off Alabama and a couple of those other SEC teams. Uh, Texas at the sixth spot, really good team. I would probably see Manning finish out the season this year, uh, so watch out for that. And five spot, I have Oregon. Now, a couple of reactions. One, Wayne Donaldson loves your JMU pick. He says, take JMU today if you like getting money. And who on this panel don't like getting money? Who's um, JMU? Uh, uh, James, James Madison. Madison. James Madison uh, University. Stephanie uh, says, keep that same energy, Dion. And we're going to get back to some of the Dion comments. But, but Tasha, I got a question for you. I got a couple of questions for you. But I got the first question I got for you is where the hell is Alabama? Oh, well, you I have you, you, you release it? A couple of weeks ago, Alabama's not. I think they're going to go through a rebuild without Saban. Saban was the Thank master. you. Guy. The oil that when oil can in the, in the uh, oh he said oh the Vaz. he was mm, he, he was the oil he was the cog that made everything go uh, I'm not gonna ever count a Bama team out but without saving you can count them out you yeah I Who's mean that? I, Chris Spencer says bullshit <laughs> I mean I just don't see, already I just don't see, there you go I just don't see Bama 
being the formidable force again not counting them out i just don't see them being the formidable force that they were because if you look at the sec teams my god on here you got georgia lsu and texas that's odd to say that notre dame is what notre dame is what takes up people's space because if they finish we all know the rules if they finish with a certain record even this was even pre-bcs and pre-college playoff finish with a certain record that they're automatic they automatically get a spot so now, no, that, to so your no, point Tasha, to your point and then i want you to finish your thought just to catch everybody up the way that the that the reason why it's bracketed this way and, and what tasha's alluding to with notre dame is the fact that the top five highest ranked conference champions get the first five slots and then the next highest ranked seven teams get a slot. So Notre Dame not being conference affiliated is almost a lock every year due to the fact that they're Notre Dame and they don't have a conference. So that's what they have. As long as they have a winning record, they can't be four and nine and then try to get in, you know, four and seven and get in. But that's Um, a great point by you, Tosh. I just wanted to make sure they understood what you were saying. Go ahead. But Notre Dame is always going to skew that with because they they're not aligned with the conference. Right. If, if Which is not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Hell, let Michigan be independent for a year. Let us go ahead and do that thing. I mean, oh. if it wasn't for that, I would actually have um, – mm, Mike, I don't know, Mike. I'm Where's the Utah? That, I see, have that's Kansas. Where, he got Kansas. I have Kansas in this, yeah. See, yeah. I think Utah's going to – I I'm going to take Utah over, over Rock Chop. I'm going to take Utah as well, and their 37-year-old quarterback, Cam Rising. Um, he, the, man is, the man played with Steve McNair at Alcorn State. That's how old he is. Mm. Um, the, to Miami at number two, y'all, I know, I know I'm about to get crushed for this. Um, and, I'm, and great comments. I'm going to bring them up too, but I didn't want to hide the panel's face bringing up comments while we got this slide up here that Mike did a wonderful job on. Y'all, I got, I'm going to sell about Miami for Florida State. I know they just got beat over in Dublin. <laughs> But I got my I, I got old I got old FSU and, and DJ um getting it done. That was a garbage pickup, if I ever say. No, 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 no. Don't do that. The man that played for every te- team in, in the in the tri-state area, and they none of them made the playoffs. Been across yeah. country and back. He started East Coast, uh Midwest, <laughs> West Coast, and now he's back in, in, in the dirty south. I no. He pulling up really- Booby Miles. He's like, I just want to play football. You right, know. okay, Booby Miles, good reference. And it's Ui Angalele. Just for y'all, I was just messing around. I ain't want y'all, my mama to think that I really butchered that. But they call him DJU on, on the broadcast, and we're going to call him DJU from here on out. Um, But I, I like what you got going here, Mike. But, Mike, Tasha, hold on. I'm going to bring this back up real quick, Mike. But, Tasha, I need to see everybody's eyes when I ask you this. So he has – hold on, let me bring this back up. So he has Ohio State at three, Oregon at five, and Michigan at 10. Mike, you trying to tell us something about the Big Ten Championship? What you no, trying to say, Mike? I want to hear you say it. Who wins the Big Ten according to this 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 graphic you got? Oh, I don't know. Tasha, what does it look like he's saying with this with this it graphic? Like what does this graphic saying, tell you? It look like he's saying Michigan ain't winning the Big Ten and the fuck out of the and, – and they are. No, we've been on the show long enough for you to say it. The who? The fuck eyes. Mike. My like, Miss Sheila, good morning, Miss Sheila. You just in time for this. Justin, Chris, uh, Marvin, Mom, Steph, y- y'all hearing this? The, the, they say men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. And I'm looking at these numbers. <laughs> and I, see- I just, I just want to say something. Let me have said that. <laughs> and I Come on, Tasha. <laughs> I would have ate my ass up in our private because Mike be trying to come for me. Y'all don't know how many times me and Mike be going at it in that chat. But I put this out and said Michigan wasn't going to be in the Final Four. Mike would have ate my hand. Mike, my- that's true. Oh. That's he true. Wouldn't he wouldn't even cook it. He would have just said, nope. mm, here you go. He said, I'm going to stick you. I'm going to stick you. <laughs> and I'm going to definitely stick this little bad luck, janky motherfucker standing here. That's what Mike would have done to me had I said that. When I when Mike first sent that to me yesterday, I had to send it to Tasha because I wasn't even going to tell her. I was going to just let her look at it and be like, "What stood out to you about this?" And, and I, I want to hear Mike sing it. I want to hear because if Tasha did this, Mike, you 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 would put in the figure four and the sleeper hole. You're like, what'd you say? Be like, when you <laughs> Tasha, when you coming to Texas again? Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, right. <laughs> now, the way says, Georgia and Ohio State playing for the chip. Ooh, the nice yeah. week back in the, of the Sugar Bowl. Okay. Um, Wayne agrees. Florida State will still win the ACC. Miami has offense, but no defense. We'll see how they fare in the swamp at 230. Mm-hmm. That should be good. Um, now, Marvin, now this is one of my sleepers, was Tennessee is coming. The only reason why I'm not picking Tennessee and I'm picking Missouri, and that's because of Luther Barton the third. Mm. Hmm. That boy there. It, he's the one that's going to give Travis Hunter some smoke for best wide receiver for the Blitney call. Um, that boy is it, it, cold. And Missouri, they don't play Georgia, Tennessee, Texas, or LSU this year. So their schedule favors up on a one-year like basis. I'm not saying that they're back or they're they're going to be top tier SEC. I think that the cannibalization of the SEC with the big boys playing each other and they get to evade Georgia, Tennessee, Texas, and LSU. I think that yeah. they may get in by the fall. So what do you think on, on the new Smash Mouth Exotic in in Tennessee, Nico? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Oh, we just gonna call him Nico, N- Nico with the Rico, because 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 DJ, you almost <laughs> messed me up this morning. Um. Let's see if he's worth the money. They put a lot of money into this kid, and they they start today. The one, the Tennessee is the Penn State of the SEC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so y'all with me on that? So we can just we can just ride. I mean, you, with, if you go if you go back pre T Martin pre Peyton, what was always a stumbling block? Alabama and Georgia. What's always Penn State's stumbling block? Usually us and the fuckeyes. Oh, wait a minute. Now, if Nico is, is uh, Hendon Hooker 2.0, then I'm going to bump them ahead of, uh, of Missouri now. I mean, I've seen him Hendon, play, and he looks, he looks very impressive. He looks very impressive. Um, he, has the, he has the prototypical pro quarterback size. The offense is catered for the quarterback to put up a gazillion points because they do that spread thing. Um, we shall see now. Yeah. You don't make enemy this morning in the worst way, Mike. AP culture cool. said you need to take two seats with Michigan at 10. Get back on your real caffeine, Mike. She told you to hit the powder. She said, get back on the powder, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, Mike didn't have no sleep last night. Stop it, Tasha. Mike no, didn't have no true. sleep last night. So we going we to – he was being a father. He was, he was like furious styles. He was being a father to his child. And, and we know sometimes that comes with sacrifices. So, Mike, I'm sorry it happened. On the day where Michigan plays at 6 30, because how in the hell are you gonna be up for that game? I need a uh, nap. Right, he does need a nap. Uh so tough. Oh, no nap for me. You know that's 7 30, damn near eight o'clock here. Does anybody need a wake up call before the game? Because you know, I, I had a nine hours of sleep. I'm I'm wired, fired up. All right. Um, so Mike, let's bring this up one more time so we can get your national championship pick. Mike, I don't how how does this break out? Who plays for the chip, in your opinion, Mike? Mm, I would be inclined to agree. I think it'll be Georgia and Ohio State uh, for a rematch, and I am going to choose Ohio State. Mayday, mayday. Mayday, mayday. Lay down, Pip in distress. <laughs> You even got the. So I, I hope you're not driving. <laughs> um, she's he's going. Yeah, Mama, I said you was on that on that car rack. I ain't gonna call it, it crack cocaine. Okay. Look, okay. look at this, Mike. Look at this. Look I at made this. this. I made this at three three thirty this morning. Tasha, hold on. I need to look at Tasha. <laughs> Tasha, I'm looking at you. I got you, Paul. Now let's go back to the people real quick because if they start out nine and zero, guess who I don't want to hear tell me go blue. Guess who I don't want to hear? I don't want to hear a, another word out of you this year, Mike, about Tasha's fandom, about the S E and the C, about none of that. And don't you bring your ass on here to next week and pick my, us to beat Texas either. Um, look at Martrice. Martrice is Ohio State fan. She's like, I love you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in right now, so I mean, it's a win-win for me. Tasha, are we gonna let him skate on this because he only had three hours of sleep? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I would never take the oppressor's filthy money. Never, Tasha. That was a bar. That went over a lot of people's head, but that was a bar. Marvin says Tennessee has a sick defensive front. 
that improved defense will be the difference for Tennessee this year. Look, and Saban being gone is the difference for y'all this year, too. I'm going to keep that real. Although I do think Alabama still makes the, the playoff. Um, Mike, you don't, Mike, we don't have to close the show on that. You don't, you got everybody flabbergasted, bamboozled, let them up. Tasha, how that line go? Right. How does that line go, Tasha? Could be <laughs> bamboozled, ran them up. You didn't land on Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Rock landed on you. So you saying that the Buckeye nut landed on your head this morning because you just picked Ohio State. What about you, Tasha? Let's let's get off of that. Well, who are you? Who do you think if you had to pick now? Uh, I'm going to pick Georgia because I just think they're most they're the most dominant team on paper right now. And given what I saw last year, um, stop trolling, though, Marvin. Even You're though I don't count, real. even though I don't count that victory against Florida State as oh a, a show thing, but wouldn't it be ironic if it was Georgia and Florida State for the national championship? Florida. Florida State, I want to just put this out there. Florida State is in a position, unlike many, that they are already in old 14 playoff mode now because they can't lose another game. Right. Like, they have that system where everybody else is like, well, if we lose to Florida State, we still got a chance. Um, use your head and not your heart. See, Marvin, you trolling. Because you know good and damn well you ain't picking no Alabama to win no championship. Like, Y'all, I, I'm going to go with uh, – man, Florida State just might get in there. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with Oregon. And I do like Georgia because they were left out of the dance altogether last year. And I know they, that pissed them off. I mean, and again, when we can go back to that, I do not agree with Texas being in there. I think I, I got my questions about Texas, too, because uh, uh, I mean, let's come on. Let's just just, just go on and put this out here. What, put it out there, Tasha. what conference did they come from? The little 12. OK, what does what do they not play in that conference? Defense. What do they play in the SEC? Plenty Not of defense. defense. Oh, so, no. so if you're going to have uh, them beating on, Bama, now. we can all go back to that Bama game. That game could have gone either way, but can they run a full gauntlet of SEC teams with that defense? Marvin said, oh, I missed that. He picked Bama. Hell to the no, 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 no. He didn't pick Bama. Him and I didn't, even have, him in the, Bama, I didn't no. even have him in the tournament. But that's on, about man. college football. A UT fan ain't never going to give Colorado, I mean, uh, Alabama that type of love. Mike, I am flabbergasted. I can't believe this. Um, I can't believe it. Um, but to Texas, back to your point, uh, Tasha, about the Alabama game and how that was a tough physical game. You don't get to play Rice and then Houston and then uh, the Temple after that. You got to come back with Georgia, with LSU. Right. I think the cumulative effect of the SEC schedule is going to have them not mm -hmm. sprint to the finish line. They may get yeah. Michigan. They may clip Michigan. We'll give our pick next week. They may even they may even get one of those early SEC teams. But as it gets into late November, and you start to hit them defenses back to back to back, that's how Archie Manning going to see the field. They're going to knock Brock Hughes' ass. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh -huh, He's going to see the field. Now, that might, now, to Mike's point, that might be their saving grace. Because you're not going to have a fall off the quarterback, Absolutely. they might no. be able to get you over the finish line. But boy, the running a, backs, the running backs is what I. Deep. They lost their two running backs, so that's kind of where my big question is. Didn't both yeah. them to the ACLs? Yeah. Yes. Um, and they, they, but they got talent in Texas, so they do. And I'm not going to ever right. disrespect Texas as far as from a talent standpoint, but that, that physicality. You ever you ever had a you ever had to fight for your life in a fist fight? And then a friend run up and want to fight you. Like, hold on, give me a minute. Like, no, let me get a the water takes over, you know? No, because I'm pulling that cinder block out. Y'all saw my what? Y'all saw my meme. I'm pulling that cinder block out. <laughs> well, we got a good game to fit. And, and Mike, you were right. We couldn't fit no NFL in today. You were right. You were right about that. We couldn't fit no NFL in yeah. today. All right. So let's let's pick some games. Now, we will get a, a couple of NFL games. But let's start. Miami versus Florida, day 2.30 in the swamp. Tasha, who you got? The only reason I'm picking Florida is because that is my little brother's team. Shout out to my little brother. Y'all know he did a little hard time. He's been um, out. He's being productive. So I'm going to root for, for my brother's team today. That's Florida. Mike. I got Miami. Yeah, he's got Miami as a top seed. Uh, I kind of like Florida in the swamp, too. I think they're going to have a losing record because of their schedule this year. But I'm going to go with Florida. So, Mike, you may be plus one on us with that one. Let's go to um, Notre Dame at Texas A&M. Mike, you up first. I know you hate them Catholics, even though your name is Michael James, but we ain't going to – that's very Catholic. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I got Notre Dame. I'm gonna gig him for my boy Drew down there in, in, in Austin. I'm gonna gig him today. We're gonna we're gonna gig him. Gig him good. Tasha, who you got? Oh, she's she's pondering, she's pontificating. You know. Uh oh. <laughs> no, y'all know my motto. A B O B. Oh, it's an A B O B debut. <laughs> gotta gotta go for the golden domers. All right, now let's go to Sunday night football, the college football style. We have two ranked teams, uh, USC mm. and LSU. Tasha, you up first. Oh, I was listening to Jarrell's show, and they seem – one of the um, guys that does Jarrell's show with him uh, seemed to think that USC has some sort of potent offense. But I'm going to always, always go towards a defense, even though I really don't like Chip Kelly down there in LSU. I don't really like the way he's coaching down there. But I'm going to have to go for those Bayou Bengals. Mike? Yeah, I don't like what Lincoln Riley does as far as recruiting defense or a defensive coach. And I know that they have a, a better system, but we don't even know what they're going to bring in. So I'm going to go LSU. R.I.P. the fat man school. Oh, good. he passed. I know he oh. passed out on the stage. I didn't know he went ahead and. and wow. Was that, wow. Was that a Missy's Missy's concert? Yeah, this. I don't think it was. I don't know if it was Missy's concert, but I know that they said he had passed out on stage or some complications after a performance or something oh, like. Oh wow! That. Y'all kiss your relatives, love on your people. Um, I'm gonna go with the Bayou Bengals as well. With that, I'm really not sold on either one at at this point, but I'm hoping for a good game. Hopefully, USC. Did some count this year. Tasha, who you shouting out this week? Uh, I'm shouting out. Y'all know I done got old. Mama done got old. I want to shout out uh, Johnny and Matthew, the families of Johnny and Matthew Gaudreau. Gaudreau, I'm sorry. The two hockey players. Well, one of them oh, um, was, was still a um, – he was a current hockey player who lost their life. Their sister's wedding was today. A drunk driver went around an SUV and – and kill both of them. Can you guys imagine, you know, and, and I mean, one of them, he's not going to even, uh, Matthew's not even going to be able to meet his son. His wife is pregnant. So they started to go fund me for him. Uh, so, you know, someone to send up prayers, thoughts and prayers to that family on that tragic loss. Yes. Uh, shouts out to Brazil. You know, I don't really, I mean, y'all know I don't care. I'm going to get political if I want to. But shouts out to Brazil for banning TikTok simply because Elon Musk thinks that he can do whatever he wants to do. They allow him to do what he wants to do in the United States, but Brazil said, uh-uh, you're not going to be putting malicious statements, racism, hatred, false information to our country on your platform, on your media platform. So shouts out to Brazil on that. And shouts out to just everybody. Just everybody have a good day. Shouts out to somebody who's supposed to be going to get a fan today. And that's why I've been having my head down, y'all. It's so difficult for somebody just to go get a fan. We're we praying for you, Gino. Lord Jesus. Mike, who you shouting out today? <laughs> I got two. Uh, I want to shout out anybody that's interested in cards or like Marvel cards. I'm doing a show on Monday, uh, Dollar Starts. So I put that in the, in the comment section. And then um, I want to shout out my lovely wife. Her birthday is tomorrow. So... Um, <laughs> Happy birthday, Stacey! Yeah, yeah. We we did wake up to it. <laughs> Maybe we did wake up uh, this early this morning with a, a sick uh, little girl. So um, I, I went ahead and let her sleep. We're trying to at least. But. The happy birthday, no, Mike! You're gonna let her sleep tonight. She's gonna get a good night's sleep. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna make sure of that, especially after Michigan walk on that field and shake hands after a victory. Oh yeah, you, yeah. She's gonna sleep. Don't worry, Stacey. You're gonna sleep like a bear. <laughs> you don't sleep like a bear tonight. Congratulations and happy birthday to my sister in law. It's the birthday shout outs coming. I want to wish a happy birthday coming up on Wednesday to my sister Stephanie, who will be 21 years old on Wednesday. So happy birthday, Steph. I love you. Happy birthday, Stacey's coming in. I also want to give a shout out to my boy Junior and to Morning Wood Apparel. That I'm rocking today. They hooked me up with some golf swag. I would turn around so you can see the rest of it. Um, but for all you golfers out there, I will put it in the comment after the show of where you can get you some 
Morning Wood Swag. I mean, just for the name alone, fellas. Can you grab the right side? And why? Is, oh, there it is. Morning Wood. What kind of caffeine did you have this morning? That you can't mm -hmm. even grab the right side with the emblem on it. I got a Colombian neighbor, so that, that's what I had this morning. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, I won't eat until about 11:30 p.m. But uh, <laughs> I'm just playing, Mama. Um, but yeah, shouts out to Morning Wood. The happy birthdays are coming in, ladies and gentlemen. It is day three of a five-day college football extravaganza. Enjoy these great games today. Michigan is back to defend their title. Don't think we was gonna let y'all get out of here without talking about them champions. Them champions. Oh, Where you at, Tasha? That we go. You see it? You see them champions? Um, wait a minute. Maze. I got it in maze just for that reason. Oh, oh, and shouts out. Uh, Marvin will be in Dallas for the Ravens game and celebrating his anniversary. Marvin, oh. me up. I will, I, we, will, we will go grab a steak, you and your lovely wife. And uh, AP Coulter says go blue, so we'll say that as well. Mike, go tend to your daughter and your wife, get you some sleep. We'll see y'all at 6 30 tonight in the big house. Peace. No blue. And we out.